for the cause of Bhagavat Dharma. That means, for example, uh, I used to be a professional writer. I used to make my living for more than 20 years uh, writing technical things and stuff like that. Now, what am I doing with my writing? I'm using it to preach. I'm using it to teach on the website. So this is karma yoga. Everything we're doing is karma yoga. I like to cook. As my spiritual master said, if you like to eat, you'll like to cook. <laughs> so I like to eat, I like to cook too. But I'm not cooking for my own enjoyment. I'm cooking for the Lord's enjoyment and to serve the devotees. This is karma yoga. Actually, everything we do as devotees should be in some way related to our service to the Lord. And if we can live like that 24 hours a day, our whole existence becomes spiritualized. You know, it's really very simple. But people have this block, this mental block, because they can't give up sense gratification and they can't give up the results of their activities. They're attached. You know, let's just, let's just be totally honest about it. They're attached, okay? They're identified. Identification means I think I am something else. Yeah? It's a kind of delusion. It's a kind of insanity where a person thinks I am this body. I am my car. I am my job. I am my clothes. I am my family designation. I am my national designation. I am this. I am that. I am something other than what I really am. Krishna in the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita, the first thing he teaches Arjuna is that you're not any of these things. You're a spirit soul. You're completely transcendental to this world. Now, what you need to do is act on that platform. And that is karma yoga. So when we realize who we are and what we are, then we should become detached from all these identifications. Huh? We should feel that, oh, I'm not this body. I'm just a tenant. I'm just like, you know, I'm just a, a renter in an apartment. Huh? This, this apartment isn't me. This vehicle is not me. It's not myself. It's just something that I temporarily inhabit. And I use it to perform my activities, like a tool, huh? like a, a vehicle, like a car. When you get to where you're going, you get out of the car and you walk away. Huh? So the journey of human life is to the destination of self-realization. Otherwise, what is the meaning of this human life? Uh, because if we perform material activities, then the results of these activities are all going to be taken away by time. Everything in this world is temporary. Everything is imperfect and subject to destruction by the force of time. So if we perform activities for our own selfish benefit, at the end of our life, it all comes to nothing. We have to leave it all behind. So we should perform activities, but not on the material platform, on the spiritual platform. After all, we can't stop performing activities. We still have to maintain our body, do so many things. Huh? But let's do those things for a different purpose. Not for our own benefit, not for our own enjoyment, but for God's enjoyment. And the miracle of it is, we find that when we do our activities for God's enjoyment, we also enjoy. Huh? When He's happy, we're happy. If He's not happy, we can't be happy no matter how hard we try. So that's the real message of karma yoga. And um, that's the real message of this esoteric teaching philosophy. That one. So let's talk about our, uh, our project. We're about to uh, set off on a journey to a very beautiful part of the world uh, in the southern Mexico. It's called Chiapas. That's a state. And Chiapas is right on the border of Guatemala, and it's mostly jungle. There are a lot of rivers, a lot of lakes. Uh, it's very beautiful. It rains all the time. Monkeys. Yeah, a lot of monkeys. <laughs> Here we're in Mexico City. There's still a lot of monkeys, but... Uh, <laughs> different kind. Well, there's been some political activities, but they're mostly stabilized now in Chiapas. 
Um, the important thing about Chiapas is that environmentally it's a very nice place. We can go there and live very simple and be uh, close to nature and perform spiritual activities, devotional service, without a whole lot of, of uh, facilities. So uh, we want to go there to do something very similar to what I did when I went to Hawaii in 2001 and just chant a lot, uh, worship deities, do a lot of devotional service. We're all set for our deities. They should be coming any day now. Neville has sent them last week. So uh, pan around and show the altar. We're all set up and uh, we have everything fixed up and ready for the deities. Uh, even we have a small altar, a travel altar, that silver thing. And then uh, on the bottom, we uh, show the, the shelf there. There? Huh? No, the, the table with all the puja paraphernalia. Yeah. You have to zoom out, I think, to get, it, get everything. As you can see, we have all kinds of paraphernalia for worship. And we've ordered a lot of ingredients like wonderful organic scented uh, camphor and sandalwood, and we're making ghee wicks and all kinds of paraphernalia for their worship. Shiny. <laughs> yeah, it's all shiny and new all nice and clean, but actually if we take care of it nicely it'll stay that way for a long time. The idea is that we treat God like a king, like royalty. Huh? We give royal service to God. Uh, God is actually the king or the ruler of the whole universe. So uh, we should treat him when he's present uh, just like a king. Huh? The finest of everything, food, scents, oils, uh, incense, offer worship, very nice ceremonies, and like that. And so the um, deity worship, in our lineage especially, is uh, the same kind of worship that's offered to a king in the Vedic tradition. We offer, especially we offer a, a ceremony called arti. RT means greeting. So when we greet the deity, we always offer uh, lamps, incense, water. Uh, we blow the conch shell <laughs> and welcome him uh, at, like a royal conqueror. Uh, because actually he is already uh, the king of everything. He's the ruler of the universe, the controller. Uh, he is the, um, the basis of reality and he's the owner of everything. So we should honor him. Uh, even though he doesn't demand it, we should do it because that's his actual position. And when we do this, we find that we don't, we don't lack for anything. If someone performs nice worship of the Lord, even though he may not be in an opulent material position, somehow or other, everything is there for him everything becomes manifest. Uh, he, he doesn't have to worry about being uh, short of anything because everything comes to him for his worship of the Lord. The Lord himself arranges this. Uh, so we should understand that wherever the Lord is worshiped on the level of the Supreme King, then all material necessities are available automatically by his grace. And we're experiencing that as we gradually increase the standard of our worship we have seen that everything is coming by His grace. And we expect this to continue. Our experience in India, for example, I mean, it was just incredible. Even though I personally had nothing, I was just a renunciant. I was just traveling around uh, like a monk, you know, and sometimes I was sleeping under a tree, sometimes I was sleeping in a marble palace. I mean, it was just, everything was there. Anything that I needed, became available just by the Lord's grace, and I never had to worry about anything. So 
That's devotional service, and that's the power of God revealed through the pastimes of the devotees. Uh, everyone should experience this. Uh, it's really wonderful life. And we, we can't imagine living any other way at this point. Uh, even though we've gone through periods of difficulty where nobody recognized us or nobody supported us, still, I mean, we, I never starved. <laughs> I, was, I always had everything I needed somehow or other. Even though sometimes there were moments of anxiety or difficulty, actually, these are only due to our lack of faith. Uh, when, when I look back over the years that I've been a devotee, I see that time and time again, whenever there was a need, the Lord manifested whatever I needed, and actually my life has gone pretty, pretty well. So I can't complain. Uh, after 40 years as a devotee, I have nothing to complain about. 